Joey, uh, a number of times through this episode, you've we've alluded to this idea of uh, open source versus closed source, the kinds of the pros and cons. Uh, it seems clear from initiatives like Vicuña, like Arilla, that you are a big proponent of open source. So what are the kinds of pros and cons of these two different approaches? Yeah, it's a great question. And it's one that's that's uh, we've been grappling with at Berkeley. Um, you know, all the labs that we've built have been around, uh, you know, doing great research and making that research accessible, not just in papers, but in open source projects from Apache Spark, uh, Clipper, Ray, uh, Vicuña, the whole LM SIF, SIS effort. Um, it's uh, openness is critical to advancing the field, to advancing research. But there's a problem. Uh, and that problem is that these models are expensive. They're expensive to train. Uh, certainly building that foundation model uh, is expensive. Even this instruct fine tuning, if you do it correctly, you do RLHF and this, you know, um, you know, using reinforcement learning with human feedback, RLHF, um, requires data annotation throughout the training process. Uh, you know, the fact that GPT-4 is so nice is probably because they had experts write how to respond to tough questions. Uh, and so that uh, that emphasis on on, on good data, uh, the need to once you've trained the, this model to serve the model, requiring you know, let's just say uh, you know a, a few A100s is pretty expensive today. But to serve a large or an ensemble of large models, which is you know kind of the alleged GPT-4 setup um, mm -hmm. at 175 billion parameters, that's incredibly expensive. Um, so there's a lot of costs associated with these. So uh, I want the open source community to succeed. But if I had to bet, uh, the analogy that I would draw for where these technologies will go um, is search. Uh, I think, you know, take take search, web search. There are a few major search engines. Uh, there are regionalized search engines as well. Um, web search, much like these models, requires a very large amount of data, a large amount of compute, both to build the data and then to maintain it, and then to serve it. It takes engineering skills. It takes a lot of safety systems. Um, making one of these technologies at, at its peak, you know, one of the best in the world, is expensive. Um, and so I think we will see something that more resembles search. Uh, just like with search, uh, you use open source search probably all the time in, in you know, the tools that you use on your computer. Uh, if you're at an enterprise, you might be using one of these open source search platforms that's hosted in the cloud. So there, there are large, enter, like large, uh, major search engines that will be closed, uh, and you know will probably continue to be closed, just like OpenAI, um, and and Claude, and you know the, the big uh, LM companies, um, and then there are smaller open source search efforts. What I hope to see is that the research community will continue to advance the open source technology, so they're good enough that you know, if I'm trying to teach students, there might be a specialized model that's good at giving feedback on Python data science exercises. Um, we might still host it. We might actually pay someone else to host it. Uh, but that model being something that we can control and innovate on will be critical. Um, I think when I look at something like Gorilla, I think it'll actually be an interesting mix where you might ask one of these major commercial technologies to break down the, the task of booking my flight into important steps. And then you might call out to more specialized variations of Gorilla for any one of those steps um, to succeed, you know, to, to do that more narrow task. Um, I, yeah, I, I, it would be wonderful if the future were, were you know, the GPTs of the world were purely the open source, the research community develops them and anyone has access to them. But I, I do think just even the cost of running them is so high um, that really these large models will probably more and more be dominated by major organizations pushing pushing them. That was a probably the best explanation um, that I've heard of why closed source will continue to dominate, at least at the very cutting edge. Mm -hmm. That analogy to search, I hadn't heard somebody do that before, but the way that you described it is expensive human augmentated data, mm -hmm. huge GPU clusters, engineering ingenuity, and then lots of these safety checks in order for Google search to mm -hmm. be able to operate effectively. Mm -hmm. You need all of those things and it's hugely expensive. And so, yeah, you're. I think you're absolutely right that we're going to a world where, um, you know, a relatively small number of big tech firms that are able to make these hundreds of millions of dollars of investment continuously. Like it isn't, you know, it's not like we get to GPT-4 and we're like, okay, it's done. Right. <laughs> We've got this, right. it's like, it's this constant, very expensive race to be staying at the cutting edge. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see if it can, because 
I mean, I guess this was, a, this was, you know, I was a lot younger, so I don't know how much I was thinking about it critically or competitively, mm -hmm. but when different search options were emerging, like, you know, when I was in high school or elementary school, there were things like Alta Vista was like, mm -hmm. you know, something that I guess I would have used and other people would have been using. But I don't remember it being this kind of, the, I don't remember the stakes being so high. There being so many competitors right. like there are in this right now. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. So there, there are places where this analogy uh, breaks. Um, so the uh, the amount of energy, the kind of realization of the impact uh, was sooner here. Um, I think I mean, search was pretty exciting when it was taking off, but like the the kind of capturing the imagination of the world, uh, this technology has done that faster. Um, I don't know if that favors commercial entities or not. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's... Uh, you know, here are things that might break my prediction. And I, I will say, I would love it if I was wrong. Um, it would be great if these things become vastly cheaper to run, to maintain, to, to develop. Uh, here's what would break it. Uh, one of the things that works well in open source is if I build something and you can make it better. Um, so I can release it, you can make it better. I can take your thing and make it better. Mm -hmm. um, with Vicuña, there was a little bit of that. So Facebook releases Llama, we make it better. Um, but it's not clear to me that you can keep fine tuning the fine tuned model and get a better and better model. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, this is one of the big questions I have for my students. Even in Gorilla, can I can I fine tune on one API and then fine tune another? Uh, what's the cost or advantage of doing that? Um, so far, it doesn't. And in fact, it hurts uh, trying to fine tune on too many things. Uh, there's this problem of something catastrophic forgetting. So as yeah. I keep fine tuning on new data, I probably need to go back and fine tune on old data, which is really I need to do more training. Um, I think today, yeah, in fact, I don't know what uh, OpenAI and others are doing as they get tons of new data, if they're kind of restarting from earlier checkpoints or starting from scratch. Um, so basically making this more accumulative uh, where our, where the open source community can work together um, is something we need and it's hard to do. Uh, just sharing GPUs is probably not enough. Um, making the model smaller is also something that you know we're excited about, but you know it's hard to do. Uh, you're trying to compress human knowledge. Uh, at some point that gets hard to do. And then if you can't compress it, it takes a lot of resources to use it, um, mm -hmm. which makes it harder and harder for the open source community to do it without capital investment. Yeah, I think like another project area that we could think about is, is something like the Unix operating system, which mm -hmm. is now the foundation for like mm -hmm. every server in the world and all Mac um, computers. And so mm -hmm. it, it's interesting to think how like that came about, but it doesn't require all these things that you mentioned around search. Like I think search mm -hmm. is more like these conversational models where, yeah, it, it's, it's just this constant updating of data, like in order for that, mm -hmm. you know, today with GPT-4 or, or other, you know, cutting edge commercial models, we don't have um, at least embedded within the model ways because of these accumulation problems that you're mm -hmm. describing and also safety things like, you know, being sure mm -hmm. that you're safe, even though you've added in some new right. information that just came out an hour ago. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, those those kinds of problems I think make it a lot closer to the search problem. Uh, whereas with yeah, with like the Unix operating system, it it is so easy to accumulate. Mm -hmm. Where you're like, okay, you have this base code, and humans can look at the code and understand their little piece of it and make it better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a tough future. Yeah, I maybe I have one more thought here because yeah. uh, so one more thought on the open source space is you know. Uh, we can still make progress. Uh, and in fact, I plan to continue to make progress in the open source space, even knowing that you know, the best models in the world probably won't be mine. Um, but what I can do, uh, you know, something I'm trying to do right now, uh, is to like, explore what are these trade-offs between you know, RAG and fine tuning with the hopes that maybe the, uh, the insights we have at, at smaller scales will translate. Um, and I think actually, if you look at OpenAI's success, that's one thing they nailed. Uh, they took this hypothesis that if you scale machine learning, uh, you scale the data, you scale the model complexity, you'll get better results. But they didn't do what other companies, uh, Google did. Uh, they didn't just go to, you know, dial it to 11. They started small and they got signal. Uh, we can continue to stay small and get signal and understand how these different things mix and maybe influence where these big technology giants will go. Um, and, you know, just like search, uh, there will be Smaller entities in other countries and other regions of the world that serve smaller markets, that serve specialized languages. Um, and I think we can have impact there as well. Um, and then finally, you know, the open source models we build might be good enough for a lot of basic tasks. You know, what you want to read through all your emails and figure out like what was the conversation about, maybe you can get away with a simpler model for that task. Um, 
there's still costs associated with it. And, you know, it still might be a commercial activity that does this, but the models themselves, we can continue to develop uh, and hopefully provide insights. Again, will shape the, the bigger efforts as well.